Welcome back to another edition of History in Your Own Backyard. I'm Susie Selleck. Today we are in Lewisburg, Ohio, here at the Historical Society, and I'm joined by Seth Schlatterbeck. Seth, thanks for joining us. Thank you. Welcome to Lewisburg. Well, thank you. So you are quite the history buff, yeah? Yes. And this town is rich with history. It is so indeed. So I, I want to get right into it with, with Henry Horn starting there, and, and let's we'll move along. Okay. Henry Horn was the founder of Lewisburg, the official founder of Lewisburg. There were already people out here, 1804, 1805. Lewisburg was platted, and the deed was registered in 1818. Henry Horn was himself a German immigrant to Virginia. He settled in Lewisburg, Virginia. He made several trips out here before he finally moved somewhere, somewhere between 1812 1816. When they established the National Road legislation, or whatever you want to call it, and it was to come through this area, a man named John Muma, and we were, we're talking now the 1830s, Yep. Uh, John Muma again an entrepreneur and speculator bought up a bunch of land and decided he was going to plat a village and when the national road went through he'd be able to take advantage of that so he platted a village called Euphemia which is not even a mile north of Lewisburg like half mile at the absolute maximum right so John Muma planted platted his town but as things happened, the first thing that happened was the National Road was originally supposed to go straight through, basically on the 40th parallel, which meant it bypassed Dayton. Well, Dayton and some of the other communities uh, lobbied to have the road diverted down to them. And so the National Road then, there was a, na a turnpike that went from Springfield down to Dayton and up to Richmond, Indiana, which kind of left Euphemia high and dry and it was some time before they finally got the road finished and graded through Euphemia. Well then in the 1850s there was to be a railroad built and they even built some of the um, some of the grading. If you go through Euphemia, Lewisburg, it, North yeah. End now on the on the left side uh, the north side just east of the 503 intersection you'll see a a little artificial hill with uh, some stonework on it and a door built into it that's now a tool shed. Well, that was the grade for a railroad overpass. Really? And, and it's there still today? It is still okay. there today. Awesome. And, and they did actually build this, build this overpass. Now, but then the railroad failed. They never got it built. And so that was another blow to Euphemia. They right. never incorporated, which tends to bring a community together and gives them a little bit of strength. Yep. And in the 1880s, the railroad came through Lewisburg, and that was more or less, I suppose you'd say, the death knell for Euphemia. And by 1911, they had closed the post office. Okay. And in 1916, after apparently a bunch of wrangling on both sides, uh, Lewisburg annexed Euphemia. And something I think is a little bit ironic is that our, Lew our post office today for Lewisburg is located in what was <laughs> Euphemia. <laughs> yeah, that's fantastic. <laughs> a little ironic. Yeah, you're right. So where we're standing right now, it, it is the historical society current day, but what, what, has, it, what has it been? Well, this was the original depot for Lewisburg, Ohio. It is not on site or currently in its original position. It was moved from on the west side of town okay. at some point. But this was the depot. Um, it was built uh, about in the 1890s, sometime towards the end of the 19th century, and uh, served as the depot until it was closed in 1966, barely 80 years of operation. Yeah. And the last train apparently went on these tracks. It's a little hard. No one has really recorded it, but it seems that it was in 19. 77. So then the railroad was gone from Lewisburg. Got it. Got um, it. But Lewisburg's on Route 70, which is a main thoroughfare for trucking and for transfer of all sorts of goods. And so that, I guess you'd say, replaced the railroad. There's a building just up the street that Henry Horn, the original structure Henry Horn built. Really? Um, and it he, still stands? It still stands. It's very, very changed 
and we do have a photograph of it in more or less in its original condition. But he established a distillery, a tannery, and a mill that stood across the, this, this road here okay. um, on Twin Creek. The mill race came up from Twin Creek. And each, he had, he had no, numerous sons, and each of those industries then were managed by one of his sons. And the building that was originally the distillery and tannery has been many, many things, including a tobacco warehouse for a good long time, because this that was the money-making industry in this area yeah. for a long time. And when I was, a, there was a sawmill there at one time, and when I was a kid, there were still the rusted bits and pieces of this saw equipment and big piles of sawdust. But all that's cleared away now and it's been made into apartments. So there's a covered bridge across from where we are right now. Right. Can you talk about that? Yes, it's now in the Lewisburg Community Park. In 1886-87, there were a, a lot of storms went through this area and destroyed a number of Preble County's covered bridge. So a man came out from Delaware County, originally from Vermont, and built, I think, 14 bridges here in Preble County, 12 or 14 bridges, a number of which still stand. As we've said, the, the uh, depot yeah. functions as the Historical Society's main building. Yep. They also own the blacksmith shop uptown and have done a good job with restoring that and taking care of that. And they're open once a month and for special occasions. Okay. Uh, the blacksmith, I'm not sure what year he went out of business, but for many, many years, and when I was a kid, I remember this well, it, was, it just looked like one day he walked away and everything, including the calendar on the wall, was still there. And you could look in and just imagine what that was like. And, and when this historical society got a hold of it, it was still all there and intact, and they have a real gem. I mean, and they have used it as a working smith, smithy. They've had people come in and do uh, demonstrations of blacksmithing. That's very cool. So that, that's a very interesting building. We have our town hall that was built in the 1890s and it, like so many town halls in small towns it had an opera house. The opera house is gone now. Uh, it was an opera house and then it was a movie theater. And that's I did great. read that when they built the opera house the freight company hadn't delivered the seating yet so the first few performances people had to bring your own chair to go to the performance at the Opera House. It's now our town hall and, and functions as a fire um, garage for the, the fire trucks. Okay. And we have one other building um, it's called the Wilson Building. Yes. It was built by the Wilson family. They had a store in there. Over the years, it was many different stores. There were, uh, there's an upstairs where apparently there were other stores and functions and things going on. It looks very, very different from what it was originally, but you'll see in the picture the original Victorian structure. Um, what people remember about the Wilson Building today is that it was Friedman Department Store. And Joe Friedman had come out in 1945, bought the department store, and then later the Wilson Building, which had housed the dime store, what we call the dime store, and a grocery store for many, many years. So Joe Friedman took that over, but in the 70s, there was a fire that gutted the building, and he remodeled and stayed in business. And Angie and Brian Rodas, who bought the building and the antique business that was in there, are almost doing an archeological reconstruction of the building. They've torn up the floor and they found some sort of brick structure, not sure if it was a kiln or a cistern or what, and they've put a piece of plexiglass, floor grade plexiglass glass, so you can, so you can see, see that. It. And ultimately someone will come in and tell them what it was all about. But to me, this is emblematic of what our bicentennial means here in Lewisburg. You know, history is not just 1800s, it's also 1900s, it's even the 2000s yeah. now, Derby days. Yes, yes. Lewisburg still has an active soap box derby. You know, the big days of the derby days started with Akron in the late 30s and the 40s, and Lewisburg's derby days started in 1946, continued till the late 60s, and then uh, 
a man named Park Harry, who had raced when he was a kid, decided to start this up again. So who are some of the notable people from, from this town and, and what kinds of things are they noted for? Okay, and let me say first that for every person that I will mention, there are dozens and yeah. there are people out there that might say, oh, why didn't you miss mention so and so and so and so, but just a few people that kind of point up um, folks that have come from Lewisburg. There was a man named David Bunger, who mm -hmm. graduated in 1927. He was part of Admiral Byrd's expedition to South America in the four, in 46 and 47, I believe. They were photographing the area of South America, and he was the one who, in photographing, found open water lakes that were warmer than the oceans. And in fact, it was a whole area that was, for some reason, ice free. And it's today called Bunger Oasis or Bunger Hill. So it was actually named for him. Uh -huh. And he was a lieutenant colonel in the Navy. Wow. And then uh, Catherine Jordan was a woman from Lewisburg, 1932, she graduated. She was a lieutenant okay. in Patton's Army. She was in the Medical Corps. Um, she was in one of the first of the MASH units. MASH, you know, is very yep, yep. famous now. Yeah. Um, one of the first MASH units, they, they found themselves behind enemy lines from time to time, and she was awarded a Bronze Star. So after doing all this dramatic stuff, she came back to Lewisburg and was a, a pillar of the community, I think you'd say. she was the Girl Scout leader, and for many, many years she was the librarian at our local library here in Lisburg. I think I would have liked to have met her. She, you would have liked to have yeah, met her. Yeah, I think so. Great, plain-spoken woman. There was another woman we were talking about earlier. Can you talk about her for a little bit? Yes, Anne Albert, Anne Rosenhagen Albert. Her father was from Germany, or her parents were from Germany, and I, I don't know if Anne was actually born in Germany or not. She, uh, after the war, Second World War, she and her family had gone back to Germany to visit family and to be one of the early humanitarian visitations in Germany. And I read, she read, I read, I read something that she wrote that her family had been on the Schindler's List, but I'm not sure what all that involved, and I would love to dig into that a little yeah. more deeply. I just read that in prepping for for today. But she was passionate about history, she was passionate about education, she was passionate about farming. She would go into the schools and do living history demonstrations for the kids on farm life and home arts from the 19th century. She served on numerous boards um, in the community and organizations. And she headed up an effort to catalog the three cemeteries in the township. And we're talking about cemeteries that were first established 1812. Seth, um, fantastic information today and just, um, you know, every reason from the Derby to this great history, the Derby days to the, the history of being able to want to come here. It's very intriguing and um, yeah, I, mean, I appreciate your time and information. Well, thank you, you yeah. folks. Um, it is a great place to live. It's a great place to raise families. It's uh, an it's a good community and I'm happy to be part of sharing it with, with you folks in the world at large. Yeah, and I, a couple of people helped you get the, um, the information together. I know this was a, sort of a group effort. Right. So maybe we can close the show out with them. Okay, good. All right. Yes, thank cool. you very much. Yeah. Thank you for watching another edition of History in Your Own Backyard. Today we are in Lewisburg, Ohio, and just wanted to say thank you to the team here who helped us collect things for the uh, interview today. Marsha, Brian, and Everett, and of course Seth, thank you. Remember, travel slowly and stop often. Bye for now.